Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is implement ATOI and it is a medium level problem. So ATOI is basically an inbuilt C++ STL function which helps us to convert a string into an integer. So basically for example, this is a string. We have to convert this particular given string into an integer, right? So for minus 1 to 3, it is going to be minus 1 to 3 in integer format. Right. So now what we have to do is we have to implement the same functionality without using any inbuilt functions and if the number is not convertible, we have to return minus 1. So before even starting the question, we would have to define what are valid and not valid numbers and they have given us in the note that a conversion is only feasible if all the characters in the strings are numeric right? or if the first character is minus and all the other characters are numeric. Right. So these are the two possible cases. Right. For example, in this particular case, the first character is minus sign and then all the characters are digits. Now, in the second particular case, we have A here which is not a valid uh, number. So, that is why in this particular case, we have to return minus 1. In ATOI, more specifically, it returns 0 if the number or the conversion is not possible. But here, we have to return minus 1. So, how can we actually solve this particular problem? Let's say we have a number in string format like this. So, it's very very simple to convert this particular string into an integer format. What you have to do is you just have to traverse the whole string. Now since the first character is 1, what I am going to do is I am going to initialize my answer with 0 initially and then I am going to traverse through this particular string. For the first character what I am going to do answer multiplied by 10 and then answer plus the character. So it will be let us say s of index minus 0. Right. So, s of index minus 0, this particular line will convert the current digit to an integer value. So, 1 from character like this will be converted into 1 from integer. Right. This is what going to happen when I execute this particular statement. So, this is going to happen when I want to insert a new digit. And for the next digit, when I come to 2, I am going to do the same thing. My initial answer was now 1. So, I am going to multiply it with 10. It becomes 10. And then I am going to add 2 to it. So, 10 plus 2 is going to be 12. Right. Similarly, when I come to the third digit, what I am going to do? I already have 12. I am going to multiply it with 10. So, it becomes 120. So, this is multiplication sign. And then in 120, I can add 3. So, it becomes 123. Right. This is what we have to do. Just multiply the current answer with 10 and then add the current digit value. Now, you only have to perform this operation if the current character is a digit, if is digit s of i. So, s digit is also a C++ inbuilt function. Now, if you want, if you do not want to use it, you can also try to verify it manually, but it is fine to use this part I guess. In the else part, what you can do is, since the correct character is not a digit, you can just directly return minus 1 from here, right. Now, let me also specify what if you do not want to use is digit, right. So, what you can do is let's say you find the current value s of i minus 0 right so it is going to give you uh, some integer value right if x is greater than equals to 0 and x is less than equals to 9 then it's a valid digit right so if we talk in detail what this function actually does is what this particular line so this particular line what it does is it takes the s chi value of s of i which is a character it takes the sky value of 0, which is also a character here, right, and then subtracts their sky value and convert it and converts it into an integer, right. So, I will have two sky values. If this particular number s of i was in the range 0 to 9, right, then it's that when I subtract its sky value from 0, it is also going to be in the range from 0 to 9. So, basically, what happens after this operation is 0 in character gets mapped to 0. 1 in character gets mapped to 1 and then so on 9 in character gets mapped to 9 right now if you don't want to use this you can also directly compare s of i here s of i should be greater than equals to 0 in character and s of i should be less than equals to 9 in character this also works right so this is also a valid way of writing the same thing now this is the only thing you have to do in this particular problem and one more thing if the first character, let us say we had a minus here. 
So we have to verify whether the first character is a negative. So let's say I have a Boolean expression negative. This is going to be 0 if the first character was not minus and this is going to be 1 if the first character was minus. At the end what we will have to do is if negative is true, if negative is true, I will just have to multiply my answer with minus 1, right, so that the whole answer becomes negative. This is what we will have to do. Now uh, let me show you the code what I have done. So I have initialized my index, answer and negative value. So both of them are, in, all of them are initialized to 0. Index is 0 for this traversing through the string, answer is 0 and negative is currently 0. Now if s of index that means s of 0 that is the first character is a minus sign that means I have to set my negative value as 1 and I am going to increment my index. I have created a for loop where while index is less than s dot size I am doing index plus plus and I do not have to initialize any variable because I have already set index is equal to 0 here. Now if the current character is a digit then I am going to multiply it with 10 and then I am just going to add the current uh, character in the form of a digit into my answer. Otherwise, if it is not digit, I am just directly going to return minus 1 from here. If uh, my negative is true, I am just going to multiply answer with minus 1, otherwise I am going to multiply it with 1 so that no change occurs. Let me just quickly submit this and show you this particular code works. So you see this passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand this particular solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.